Hello, this is Jack, and this screencast is going to go over using a Xilinx programming cable with your Papilio. Uh, the reason you'd want to do this is to use uh, ChipScope or to use the EDK or to use Xilinx uh, Impact programming application. Um, okay, so to start off, a uh, little background information. I have an Insight JTAG cable, model IJC-1. Um, this is the only uh, cable I've tested with. So I believe this technique should work for any other cable, but uh, yeah, I'm not entirely certain. I haven't tested with others. So, um, so let's start out and let's just do a couple things to establish the baseline. Uh, so let's program a bit file first and we see that it works okay. I'm going to connect my Xilinx programming cable to the uh, JTAG port on the Papilio and uh, we should see that it, we can no longer program with the Papilio programmer as expected. Um, and so let's also look at uh, what our device drivers look like. Um, we see that there's just one uh, USB serial port connected. By default, the if you install the default drivers for the Papilio, that's how it should be showing up. Uh, if it doesn't, don't worry about it too much. It's not a big deal. Okay, now let's try to initialize the chain um, it will initialize the chain, however, um, you won't be able to really use it. So if we do uh, ID code looping test, where this will read the ID code 10,000 times, it should fail. Yeah, it, it fails. Okay, so let's make the change that should allow this to work properly. So you need to download a program from the FTTDI website called FTProg. Um, download it and then you need to scan and parse the contents of uh, uh, the Papilio. Um, we should see that it is a blank device at this point because that's how the Papilio ships by default. Uh, go to hardware specific, port A, hardware, choose opto isolate and then program device, hit program. It should have finished programming. Now we can scan and parse it again. And we see actual data here. Okay, so all that did was program the EEPROM. In order for these changes to take effect, we need to reboot the Papilio. So unplug the, the USB port and plug it back in. Um, and in the device manager, we should see it come up. And since we've changed the settings, we should see two COM ports coming up. Um, to reflect that change that we just made. Okay, so now we should be able to go in and initialize the chain and impact. Um, and this time we can actually do uh, an ID code loop that should work. Okay, so this is how you test to make sure your, your um, chain is sending data and that you can actually do JTAG programming successfully. It reads the ID code uh, 10,000 times in a row and uh, that's a great indication that everything is working. Okay, so that's working. Um, now if we go back and we try to program, we still have the, the JTAG cable connected so it doesn't work but if I disconnect it which I'm going to do now it does actually work in this mode um, so that's interesting you could actually potentially leave it in opto isolate permanently uh, and still have the full functionality so the Xilinx cable works when it's plugged in and the Papilio programmer works when uh, it's not plugged in but if you want to revert back to the original way that the hardware was set up um, then just go ahead and do another scan and parse you see that there's all kinds of data you see that the two serial ports are still showing up uh, then just do a a program and you want to erase the EEPROM okay <clears throat> now if we uh, do a scan and parse it shows up as all F's, so a blank device. We're going to unplug. We plug it back in, and it comes back as expected. So how it was originally. So uh, that wraps up this screencast. Thank you for watching.